Uh, but we have a a Annie No. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Perfect. Uh, from Miracosta College. Uh, and she's going to talk about um, her career and also the business program up at, at Miracosta as well. So I will hand it over to you. Okay, let me go ahead and share, share my screen. And you can let me know if you can see this okay. Let's see. Yes. Okay. There we go. And hold a sec. Start from the beginning. There we go. Okay. Let's see. And, and just for the students out there, um, to give you some idea of why you should be interested in business, by the way, I would say 75% of the population works for a business and not a nonprofit or a government agency. So if, if you be, most likely you're going to end up working for one business or another when you get out there, unless you have a job like mine. Okay, are we ready with our Prezi? Yeah, just check in the chat. Okay. So I'm Annie No. I am a full-time uh, business faculty over at Miracosta College. Um, so today I'm going to be going over uh, some of the basic concepts uh, related to the business administration field and specifically supply chain management. But I'm also going to talk about uh, my career as an instructor too. Um, so I've had two careers at this point now, and so we'll talk a little bit about both. Um, so let's go ahead and... oops. So to give the context, um, the field that I focused in, while it is business broadly, um, I learned about something called supply chain management. Um, and while you may or may not be familiar with this term, it is something that is around you all the time in your everyday life. So um, the definition I have here is that it's the flow of goods and services from raw materials to the final customer. So if you think about the device that you're on right now, whether you're on your phone or a tablet or a computer, that um, item that you have in front of you went through a long journey to get to you. So if we start at the beginning, um, way back when, your device had raw materials to begin with. So whether that's plastics or metals, um, whatever went into it uh, had its original state. And then different companies or suppliers took those raw materials and put it together to create components, whether it's the keyboard or the buttons or the trackpad or the screen, the glass, all of that material gets um, transformed into something. And then there are larger organizations, which we can call like manufacturing, that buys the components from suppliers to put it all together into something um, a more finished good that you're used to seeing. And then of course we have to figure out how to get it to you. So it gets, it goes through different distribution channels and eventually a retail store or location. Maybe you ordered your device online or you went to the mall and you picked it up somewhere and that's you, the customer. And so supply chain has a lot of people touching um, the journey of your product along the way. And so that means there's lots of jobs and opportunities, depending on what you like to do, that you could fit within that supply chain. Um, so my career has mostly been, um, I would be located in a manufacturing company, and I'll talk about some of, what, some of those companies. And my role was to negotiate deals with the suppliers. So I would analyze data and um, negotiate the best deal so that we're paying a fair price for quality products or quality components so that it would go into our products. And then I liked it a lot because it let me use my uh, analytical or math skills while still engaging with people um, and building relationships. So it was a lot of fun to do that. And then, um, so let me tell you a little bit about how I got to that role. Um, so a little bit about like after high school, um, where I went to school, right? So I originally actually wanted to be a civil engineer. Um, I wanted to build buildings and bridges and see something um, get made. But uh, at the time, um, I'm first gen, uh, generation college student, and we were low income. So I actually couldn't afford to go to the UCs. Um, even with the grants and um, my family income, I, I couldn't afford it. 
But uh, fortunately, I applied to a private school called the University of San Diego and was able to get a scholarship. And so when I went there, they didn't have an engineering program, but I had to figure out like, well, what can I do instead? And um, talking to my cousins, so it's helpful to talk to family members or neighbors or people that you know. And my cousins talked about supply chain management and said, did you know this, this is a thing you could do and you could still help build stuff, but just from a different angle. And so I went to USD for supply chain management. And while I was there, I ended up getting an internship at a company called Hamilton Sunstrand. They make the um, fans that go into aircrafts. So the AC units, the fan that's in the bathroom. Um, so I was an intern there for a year and that let me see what it's like to really be in supply chain. And that was great and I loved it. Um, I ended up, sorry, I ended up then um, getting a full-time job after graduation at an aerospace and defense company called BAE Systems. And when I was graduating, I actually had multiple job offers um, and I ended up picking BAE because they were the most welcoming and they were the most um, interested in who I was and how I could be part of that team. So when you're thinking about where you wanna work, it should be something where you have a, a good fit, like you feel welcomed and that your contribution matters, right? So they were not the ones that were paying me the most money. Um, they were the ones that made me feel most welcome. And so BAE Systems, um, they, they make a wide variety of things. So again, think about the manufacturing piece. Um, they worked in intelligence. So they would build data centers with lots of servers for all of the classified information across the government agencies that are being collected. Um, they made tanks and um, ships, um, guns and artillery, uh, a wide range of products. Um, and the thing that I learned when I was there that I really liked is its motto was that we protect those that protect us. So if you know people in the military um, or have been in the military, uh, then perhaps working in the aerospace and defense industries might be like that connection that you have with that type of organization as well as like someone in your life. So um, I worked there for about six years and um, while I was there, I actually decided to go back for my master's degree. So I got an MBA from Arizona uh, State University while working. And it was actually an online program. So there's lots of online programs now. And I mean, you're, you're living through it right now. <laughs> um, but like I did my full MBA online. That allowed me to work full time while going to school in the evenings and on weekends. It was a lot of work, but I think it was really helpful for my career because I could still continue to work and use my work experience to connect it to what I was learning at school. So let me just kind of check the chat real quick. Yes, the company did pay partially for it and many larger companies will do that. They'll like, I think at the time they were paying me about $5,000 a year that I could use for school. Um, and that's uh, untaxed, right? So some companies will actually offer more, but uh, when they go over that threshold, then you have to start paying taxes on that extra amount. So um, that's something good that you might wanna ask companies if they offer tuition reimbursement for education. Um, thing to note though, at BA Systems, they had like a, a one-year requirement. If they're gonna pay for school, I should stick around for a year so that they can benefit from me and my learning and not just like walk away with my degree, right? So, um, and if I left early, I'd have to pay back that tuition. So some things to be aware of. Um, now, ASU is uh, well known for supply chain management. So that was another thing about thinking where I wanted to go to school is um, if it would give me a good network of people while also um, awareness of uh, its strengths. And I found that when I was applying for jobs, many people recognized the ASU name or even went there and they uh, felt very comfortable with my um, expertise in supply chain management. So let's see, oh, it went away. Let's see, here we go. Now, um, after I worked at BA Systems, I started to move around more at different companies. Um, I have a tendency to get bored sometimes and when new projects aren't available, then I will look for them. BA was good at giving me new projects, which is why I stayed around for about six years. 
Um, but then later on, as I got more expertise, I was looking for more of a challenge. So I first worked at UC San Diego for about a year, um, also still uh, working with suppliers, but more in a lab setting. And then I switched over to CareFusion. They do medical devices. So if you've ever been in a hospital, you might see the machines that are hooked up to patients, giving them um, medicine. And so uh, that was where I was working. And it was a lot of fun because uh, I could see the different products uh, getting built based on the deals or the supplier relationships that I was facilitating. Um, at CareFusion, we, with those devices, um, a lot of the deals that I was negotiating had to do with at a corporate level. So um, we had sales folks and technicians going to hospitals. And so one deal that I did was cars. So we wanted company cars for all the employees so they could carry all the equipment and get around safely. And so that was uh, one deal that I would do there for that organization. But my focus later in my career was um, actually negotiating deals for um, people. So their companies need to hire good workers, both for full-time and temporary. And so I was managing the different um, skills and expertise of people that were coming in and out of the organization, whether it was for full-time hires or for um, temporary work. Maybe they were there for a year or two years and maybe would go elsewhere or stay. And so um, in these different places, I got to do different kinds of deals, whether at the aerospace and defense, it was more around data centers and um, uh, military equipment and then sciences at UC San Diego and then medical device at CareFusion. So even though I was trained in supply chain and negotiations, you can see I was able to use those skills in a wide range of industries. And so that's one great thing about supply chain management is when you learn it in one industry, it's easy to bring to other industries. And then you get to learn that industry and explore different things and then use that learning when you continue throughout your career. So that's what I really liked about doing supply chain. Are there any questions about any of the companies um, that I've mentioned so far that you might be curious about or supply chain in general? You can type it in the chat or ask it out loud. Did you see a significant difference between, um, you know, the private companies and somewhere, somewhere like public ones, like you see San Diego? Was that a, a whole different environment or were they very similar? So these three were very different environments. And I think that's why I moved around the way I did. So with BAE, because it was a very well-established um, contractor to the government, they had a lot of expertise and it was great for my learning. So I learned best practices like how things should be done. And then when I went to the public sector, I think these are uh, very smart folks. Um, and so I found that the pace at the UCs was slower because we had to talk through everything all the time before we could make decisions. So think like a think tank. And then I would find the most exciting was when I switched to private on the medical device side because they were learning uh, about what's best practice and they were growing so fast with the technologies that all the stuff that I learned from the previous companies, I could share here and they would be wowed and say, let's do it. So change happened much faster in um, this private sector because they were trying to save money while making the best deals and putting out new products for its hospital customers. So that was really cool to be able to see the different sectors this way. Um, let's see. In the chat here, we've got Ryan Paulson. He's asking, did you work for the military or was it through a company? So BA Systems is a contractor to the military. Uh, so we, I work through them, uh, but not directly for the military. Uh, but for instance, when I was at BAE, I got to work on proposals. And so they would send me over to DC. I actually lived in DC for like three months doing work for a government agency. Um, we were trying to build data centers for them. Uh, and so I would get to connect with military uh, and work in like top secret locations. <laughs> um, and I wasn't privy to all the information, but it was really cool to learn more about how um, our agencies worked. 
And I, that's one thing I would highlight is uh, I got to travel a lot. So I would say I traveled 25% or about a week, a month. And that was great because right out of college, I hadn't traveled much before. And so the company is now sending me all over um, the world. I was, I've been to maybe at least two thirds of the states in the US. I got to go to Europe. Um, and like even with Care Fusion, we had uh, facilities like in uh, Europe and Asia. Um, and so traveling was a lot of fun. Meet new people, um, go to conferences, learn about suppliers and their new products. Um, the, the interesting thing about when you're on the supply chain procurement side is that everyone wants your business. So people are super nice to you, um, which I, you have to be careful of too, right? It's like, it has to be ethical when you're um, working with these companies. And so being careful about what you can accept or not accept as gifts and meals uh, while still getting to know the supplier and building relationships, um, because it makes it a lot easier when you're negotiating deals. Um, is that if you have a, a good uh, relationship with someone, they're, they're more likely to collaborate with you um, on what it is you need and what they need to. It did get tiring a little bit <laughs> with the traveling. So uh, when I moved um, to Care Fusion, I cut back on my travel. I'd started, a, um, I'd just gotten married and was trying to find a balance of being home with our dog versus you know traveling a lot. So um, it's great early on in a career to, to say yes to everything <laughs> uh, project wise and do lots of travel to get exposure um, and, and meet new people within the company. Cause that's actually how I got promoted is as I would go on these business trips and meet uh, VPs and directors, they got to see how well I did my job and they would ask, where do you see your career? What is it you wanna do? And I would tell them. And then they would keep an eye out for opportunities uh, and that's how I ended up moving from procurement specifically for a division, like just buying for data centers or just buying for um, shipyards or something to corporate. So then um, the second half of my career was focused more on buying things for the entire company. So much larger deals. Now, um, with that transition, I turned more into a consultant uh, and what that means is I was no longer a full-time employee like I was at these previous companies. Instead, I became a part-time employee working maybe 20 hours a week, uh, but I was charging consultant rates. So I was able to make as much money as I was as a full-time employee working half the time as a consultant for these other companies. And I was able to do that because when I was working at these other companies, I made a good impression on different executives and directors. And as they moved to other companies, they remembered me and would say, hey, I remember you did this project when we were at CareFusion together. Would you mind coming and doing a similar project for this new company I'm at? And so that's a common thing is that uh, leaders and management um, in companies will remember uh, strong performers and um, recommend them or bring them to other companies they work at. It was helpful for me to do this part-time work because I decided to go back to school full-time. And so I went to the University of San Diego again to get my PhD in leadership because I found that um, while working at these companies, even though I was good at negotiating and doing the math, what the hardest part was, was the people, is how do we um, get people to change or do new things or learn? And so that's why I went back to school because I really liked teaching and I really liked um, collaborating with people. And so I went to get my PhD at the University of San Diego so I, that I could switch to teaching full time eventually. Uh, but consulting allowed me to pay for school um, and still survive, right? Or st still, still live comfortably. Um, and then with that, uh, another thing to be aware of is that here locally in San Diego, um, USD and Cal State San Marcos both have supply chain management programs. And so um, I later on ended up teaching at Cal State San Marcos in their supply chain management program. So um, I'm able to use what I learned at all these different companies along with my degrees to, to teach this subject. Um, questions or curiosities at this point? Okay, 
had one in the chat was what was the atmosphere like? I'm not sure. I think that might have been at the companies type of thing. Yeah, so I think I addressed that in in kind of the way that the company moved in like how fast or slow it was. Um, but I could also add in terms of atmosphere, it also has to do with the company culture, right? And so like at Carefusion, they were a spinoff of another company. And so it was really fast paced and people were um, really eager to do new and exciting things. So that was a really great atmosphere to work with. And a lot of people were like around my age um, and, and it was fun. Like there was lots of social gatherings that we would hang out. There's happy hour in the courtyard, like the CFO would, um, like get beer kegs for us and food. And that way we could bond while also work like on a Friday, um, in government, it's a little bit more strict, so they can't do the same things, but they had their own, uh, ways of, um, creating atmosphere in the company so that people could get together um, and, and hang out and learn from each other. Um, UC San Diego, I felt like it felt like being at school, right? It's a college. And so a lot of the, um, atmosphere is like being in school, uh, when you're working with people, uh, there too. So All right. more questions about supply chain management. At the end of the day, I am super happy that I went through supply chain management um, because it allowed me so many opportunities to try different things. Um, I learned I met a lot of great people at these different companies. Uh, and the nice thing, too, is even though I was in procurement or like uh, purchasing within the supply chain management, it allowed me to meet and work with people across the company in different functions. Like so I got to work with finance people and accounting um hr a lot and facilities and so potentially a lot of times procurement folks when they start there you can actually move into other areas that you work closely with too because as you learn about that function um then you can bring a different perspective if you start to work there so at one point i was actually considering moving fully into human resources and um, managing their programs and suppliers that way from a like a, a people's perspective um, but I ended up deciding to go back for my PhD so that I could go into teaching because my overall long-term goal was to become um, an educator. Because um, one thing that I learned when I was doing a lot of that um, people uh, sourcing uh, or procurement with peoples and their services, um, that you know, uh, if you're not a full-time employee, there's instability that as a temporary worker, right? They can let you go. Um, it's not full time, you don't get the full benefits. And it felt to me unfair to treat workers this way. Um, and while I tried to make suggestions of like, hey, we should hire more people um, because you wanna keep them, you don't wanna just leave them hanging. Um, that wasn't always financially the best solution according to our executives. So that's why I made the decision to switch to education because I could facilitate uh, development in these careers as opposed to possibly like letting go people. So I really didn't like the, the terminating of workers. It made me feel very uncomfortable. Um, can the funny thing little, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about your, your role over at Miracosta now and some of the things sure. you do today? Mm -hmm. So one thing to know is that it wasn't straight to Miracosta. Um, when I was getting my PhD, uh, it helps to start um, adjuncting. So that's part-time teaching. And uh, for a couple of years, I was an adjunct teaching at USD. I was teaching leadership courses in their undergrad and graduate programs. And I was teaching business courses at Miramar College and then um, supply chain management courses at Cal State San Marcos. And so while it was really cool that I could teach different classes based on my skills and my education, it was a lot of work because I'm teaching like two or three classes at three different campuses. So that's driving around, trying to keep everything straight. And um, the pay is not that great as an adjunct because you're a part-timer um, and there's no benefits um, in some cases. And so um, this is a reality for people teaching. And for some, um, this might be what you want, right? So let's say uh, what when I was actually working at BAE Systems full-time, I was adjuncting like one or two classes a night because I just like teaching and 
it gave me the flexibility to uh, contribute to as an educator while still working full time in my career. And I continued to do that for a couple years until I decided, you know, let's make the full switch. Um, And so I I slowly transitioned to consulting with more teaching and then finally uh, a lot more teaching. And um, now when I switched to Maricosta, um, fortunately there there was full-time positions open. And uh, to to be frank, the industry or I see higher education uh, in general, there has been a a shift to more part-time or adjunct uh, teachers over full time. So there's less openings available. But um, if you're looking for openings, they are available because not everybody's looking for that full time job. And so um, I was hired in specifically for teaching statistics in the business department. Um, So every semester I teach like three or four uh, sections or classes of business statistics. And um, so this sometimes students get a little nervous, like, oh, math's not my favorite. But really business statistics is more about problem solving, right? So at work, we've got information that we collect from um, equipment or computers or transactions like sales, and we're just trying to make sense of it. And so we're trying to analyze that data so that we can make better business decisions. So that's what I teach primarily at Maricosta College, and that's what I got hired in to do. Um, But I also teach a couple other classes, just uh, again, from my um, experience, Uh, I teach personal finance. So on a more personal level, what decisions we can make to improve our financial position, as well as have um, the funds that we need for short, medium, and long-term goals. I also teach uh, leadership classes for uh, Maricosta's bachelor's degree program in biomanufacturing. So that's really cool because it lets me use the industry knowledge I have in MetaDevice and my leadership experience from USD and my old work experience to teach how do we manage and lead in complex organizations. And then a new class that I I created with a colleague was about career mentoring. Um, my research when I was at USD was actually how d- does mentoring relationships help us uh, develop in our leadership and in turn our careers. And so um, I designed a class based off of that um, research on ways to help students in college um, get a mentor. So we actually find you a mentor based on your interests and you and that mentor work together for the semester on developing your academic and career goals, as well as practicing how to have a good mentoring relationship, talking about, um, career, uh, paths, and then making those decisions so that you know what some of the next steps you might want to pursue in the long run. Um, I was fortunate in a lot of the companies I worked at, especially at BAE, they were big on mentoring. And so they assigned me a mentor throughout um, my time there. And then I found my own mentors and they helped me make some of the decisions uh, that I made when it came to career. So, um, you know, mentoring doesn't have to be a long-term relationship. It can just be something as simple as having a conversation, one-time conversation with someone about your career interests. Um, So like what a day at Maricosta might look like for me, for instance, tomorrow, um, I'm teaching my leadership class for about an hour and a half in the morning. And uh, in my class, we're actually watching an episode of The Office and analyzing it uh, in terms of leadership and group dynamics. And then at the same time, we're analyzing ourselves. So this is getting people to think about um, at work. Sure, there's a job that you got to do and you have to be present to it and analyze what's going on. But at the same time, you're working with people and you have to be aware of people's personalities and styles and how to communicate with each other. Um, And so I like to incorporate fun things like uh, videos and movies. Um, Like my midterm is we're watching The Martian and analyzing that and and ourselves. Um, And then my afternoons, I'm grading. Uh, Some other days I'm in meetings with faculty. Um, For instance, on Wednesday, uh, because of my negotiation experience, I am on the union's negotiation team um, to negotiate, you know, salary and working conditions and things like that. So knowing um, what you're good at and then finding opportunities to use it can not only help grow those skills, but also contribute to wherever you're working at questions? 
So any advice you would give our, our, our students, senior or otherwise, of things that they should think about while they're in high school at this point and looking forward to things like business administration and supply chain management? Uh, what, what kind of skill sets, uh, what kind of actions should they be taking now? So the first thing I would do is to check out which colleges have these programs um, and think about what aspects of supply chain would be of interest to you. And so um, in high school, I found that the classes that contributed to um, supply chain well would be like your English and writing classes, because I found that um, communication was so important when I was in supply chain, whether it was writing an email, asking for something within the company or writing an email while I'm negotiating with a supplier. Um, having good writing skills was very helpful. Um, if you have classes that allow for public speaking, that's helpful too. Um, and it's not like you're going to be talking to a large group when you're at work, but you might be in meetings with like 10 people and feeling comfortable talking to a group. Um, is very helpful because you can be great at analyzing things and, and writing, um, but being able to connect with people so that they can see your work is really important too. Um, I mean, I took calculus in high school, but it turns out I didn't need it. Looking back, I wish I had taken a stats class instead because <laughs> like they had AP stats, but I took calculus um, because I thought I was going to go into engineering, right? Uh, but I didn't. So that's one thing I would probably change uh, or, or take if I could. Um, and you know what, if, you're, if your school has anything where you can like do entrepreneurship, opening up a business, um, running something like running an event, um, running a, a, a bake sale, running something, operating something, that is a really great um, experience as it relates to supply chain management too. Because think about if you're doing an event for school um, or um, an activity, all that planning is very similar to the kinds of planning that's done in the supply chain space. Um, so hopefully that answered that question. Yeah, we, we do have uh, an, IB, uh, an IB business management course. And I don't know if any of the students who are in that are, are with us today. Um, they may have signed up. Um, we also have an entrepreneurship program, which is not running this year because we're virtual. Uh, but when we come back, uh, we certainly will all be starting that up. And I actually run that one here at the school. Um, we're going to be running out of time. I want to know if, if any of the students or the instructors have some more questions before we wrap everything up today. Questions. Ms. Lavoie, do you have any questions? No, I don't. But I know one of my phenomenal students must. And my um, maybe my favorite class. Oh, <laughs> I think favorite depends on how many questions she gets. <laughs> no, they are an awesome group. And I'm sure they have a question. As you're thinking of questions, I do have some information on the screen here. So on Instagram, you're welcome to follow us at business technology ACP. So this is the academic and career pathways. Um, for business and technology. So um, you can check out all the different events and resources available to our business and technology students. And this uh, is a wide range. So it's not only just business students, it's accounting, um, automotive. So if you're into auto, but maybe you wanna open up your own auto shop, um, those students, uh, computer studies and information technology, design like architecture um, or web design. Um, all those kinds of students are within the Business and Technology ACP, so you can always check that out. And then I've also included my LinkedIn. If you just kind of want to see my career path, I've got everything in there. Um, and you can always add me as well, too. So. Oh, let's check the chat. Well, I guess they're going to be a quiet bunch today. Uh, my, my end comment is, is in terms of business, most people, the, there's a combination that happens and an opportunity. So no matter what occupation you have, many times there's opportunities to start your own business or, or go into consulting, either one. 
I've been a consultant. I've started businesses up before and things like that. And I've worked for business. So I've kind of had all three roles uh, in a similar fashion. So, and that could be anything. And if you, like I, she was making a good example of, if you want to be an auto mechanic, that's great. Um, but a lot of times people turn that around and say, well, what if I want to start my own shop, right? And now you're back to being business again. So having that background in business, a lot of times is really fundamental uh, as part of your career. And even if you're majoring in something else, you can still take a couple of business classes. We actually have a series of entrepreneurship classes. They're like one and two units that help you like uh, start up a business. And so that's something to consider too. Okay. The, the, unfortunately, the bell is going to ring. These, these are kind of short sessions. Uh, but I want to thank everybody for coming today. This has been, it's been uh, a lot of great conversations and a lot of great information has gone around today. And again, these will be posted in the College and Career Center. They're going to have to give me a week or two after uh, just to get the, the, the videos edited. Um, but thank you so much for coming today. I do appreciate it. Uh, and I'm going to list your contact information as well uh, once I post the videos too. So if you have any other questions, please ask. Uh, Thanks. Yes, thank you very much. And thank you for plugging writing is important. <laughs> yes, communication writing definitely is, is way up on the list there. So we always want to see that. All right, everybody. Thank, thank you so much. much. Have a great afternoon. I appreciate you coming today. And hopefully we'll have you back again soon. Anytime. Bye. Okay. Thank you.